Well, good day, Max here again. Welcome back to the shop. So, what we're going to look at today is this. We've got a job that we need to do a little bit of slotting on. So, I had two options. I can either slot it by hand in the bridge port, or I could, well, that would take a fair amount of time. Or I could put that time into more valuable use and sort out our slotting head here, which I think will go that way. Now, this is the slotting head that I picked up some time ago. Um, it is as it is. So I sort of need to have a bit of a look over it. Um, the mounting bracket, I want to take off and I need to confirm that the mounting bracket is actually square to the body. I don't want to be slotting on an angle. And yeah, we'll just have a quick quick look over the thing and then we'll have to make up some form of tooling. I imagine I don't know what the end actually looks like yet. I haven't had a look to hold a slotting tool. So first things first is we'll get this bracket off and we'll check that out. So we have a new addition down to this end of the shop. So the uh, previous owner will be very glad to see him put to proper use. So this is an old Australian sit-ins, sit chrome brand from a long time ago. Uh, apparently the story goes this set of tools, this box was used in an Australian movie recently. So I'll have to look it up and check it out. So we'll be using these tools to assist in our repairs. Um, being down this end of the shop also means that I don't have to traipse all the way up to the other end where my little red um, roll box is. So makes life a little bit easier. So let's um, crack on. There's four bolts or four nuts at the front. So hopefully, if we get rid of these, it should allow that to separate. I don't know what brand of slotting head um, this is. I'm assuming it's a Chinese one because there's some, what appears to be some Chinese writing on the electric motor. Um, it's a three-phase electric motor, so won't be any problem to run here. So, get a bit of a, a hammer give it a few taps the thing's in a bit of a funky ass hinky stand too which uh, doesn't make life easy get this nut out of the way so we can lift it clear so far okay Let's set this down out of the way chain blocks they just want to get tangled up that's their main mission in life well 
So we'll let that rest there and we'll go and investigate the stand. Looks all good there. Tapered seat on it for some reason there. So it must be to centralise it. Okay. It looks to me that tapered area there should be parallel. Someone's been fuck knows what. Um, let's have a look at the other part. So when we look at the rear, that's a parallel bore. So we'll have to check and check these diameters as long as we're sitting on the front of the diameter and then what we have to do is make sure all this ring of cap screws that hold this part to this funky looking elbow here, the adapter, um, are tight and then we'll check the squareness. We might just machine this anyway. But before we do any of that, I'll hump this over to the bridge port and make sure that this radius area here does actually bolt up um, to the top of our bridge port. Uh, which will be this area just here, so it should pull up underneath. What we've got to look for is that it's not too, too long and fouling in the corner under here. Right, so looking at this, I've just separated the adapter. So this part actually does nothing. So this adapter seems to register quite neatly on this diameter here. That sits on there rather well. So yeah, that, that deck sticking out does nothing. Um, so that's a good thing. Uh, this is marked with degrees around the outside. I'll clean this up just so you can set the head to the um, whatever angle you require. Right, so let's look at our bracket. Uh, every time I turn a camera on, a um, bloody aeroplane flies over today. So as I suspected, we are going to have some clearancing issues up underneath there. So probably have to take about 10 millimeters out of that area there. Um, the rest looks like it will fit up um, okay. Um, found an old bolt. This is a really old bolt, this one. Check out the symbol on top. <laughs> Been a long time since um, Caterpillar have used that symbol on their bolts. So just doing a quick check on this thing with our square, it's not that bad, it's probably, it seems to dip off down the, the latter half, possibly about five thou. So all in all things considered, I think we'll let this go and we'll see how it bolts up. Of course we still have to uh, clearance the top of it, so we'll be trimming this away. So, we don't have to do anything like with that underside mounting face or this front face here. We're going to roll with it. Because when you think about it, when this is bolted up in the bridge port, regardless of how square that bracket is, what you've got to think of is how true is this plane here to the table that's the end result and to, we'd really need it bolted up on the machine and then we clock off the uh, ram on the slotting head and check it against our table because you've got wear in the table you've got wear between the column and the knee don't know exactly what's going on there you hope it's all square so I think we'll go that way. We'll get the thing bolted up after I've clearanced it and we'll do a final measurement and then we'll know exactly when where we are because if we're a fair way out, the only way we can easily correct it is to put that support bracket in the milling machine and we'll know then how far we'd have to offset the, the bracket. And of course the other thing to consider is how square is this face 
running to the ram. So we need approximately 70 millimeters from the center of the hole up to our clearance area. So That gives us a line there to work to. So what we'll do, we'll machine that off and then we might just tilt the head on the machine like a 30 degree angle and just knock the corners off like that I think. We'll probably we should establish a center line that way our 30 degree corners will be relatively even. Because we're only uh, clearancing, we can just eyeball the centre of the hole. Drop a scribe line down there. Hopefully reverse the procedure. Approximately there. So it's, so we've got uh, 25 mil, actually one inch is closer. Describe. Come across half an inch. Oops. Come across half an inch from the other side. A bit tricky to hold like this, but yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, so That's our center line to work to. So once we've taken the top off this, we'll put another, we'll use our bevel square and we'll describe a line, probably 30 degrees off either side. So we're not gonna get all fancy and radius it and that. there's no, no need for it in this case. Purely practical. So we just need to square off our face here. We'll get it indicated in. Nothing extremely accurate. As long as we're within a bull's roar, we'll be fine. How much is a bull's roar? 10 thou. Well, we all know that. Well, <laughs> that's pretty bloody good there. I plonked it down off camera and I sort of give it a couple of taps around. I didn't realise it was that close. And I'll just tighten down nice and tight. Let's recheck it. Drops off in the middle and comes back up. That's um, plenty close enough. Well, hopefully that's still recording it. Um, I just moved the camera then and it went. That mag base that I used when us over bloody tech fell off, fell on the floor with my phone. Uh, I guess that's what happened. You put a uh, a bloody expensive phone 
in a cheap ass fucking mag base. Okay, I only got myself to blame there. <laughs> All right, let's. Um, we might use this tool that's already in it. Yeah, this tool that's already in it will do the job. Might just angle it around. Yeah. I don't like the front of the grind on the angle down there. I don't know if I can zoom you in a bit. Let's see down the bottom of the uh, radius. Uh, right in that area there. Is this a bit much, too much going on with regards to tool contact with the work there? So I can, I might just, I'll, well, I could just grind that back a bit or just angle the tool around. I'll pull a tool out, we'll have a look. Just angle it around a little bit, I think. Okay. Well, right, let's get a fired up and see where our strokes are going to end up. bad there. Get some Allen keys so we can unlock the uh, tool slide. Well, it was doing a uh, little job in the shaper here for our slotting head, but uh, I, well, myself, I do not have a good track record with electrics. As soon as I touch something that has electrics on, it shits itself. So the motor when I go to hit the start buttons on, on the uh, switch panel just buzzes same as the big lathe did the other week so with the big lathe I've ordered new uh, new thermal overload and a new start switch there relay whatever it is and the same things happened on this so I'm gonna replace both of these as well so that's um, temporarily put this job on hold but 
So I thought I'd uh, continue on um, going over the rest of the slotting head, which is uh, probably a good thing I did because I'll just give it a bit of a poke and a prod and the mounting bolts for the motor were loose. Mind you, bear in mind, this has just been put back together by someone. That's because I know that's just been freshly welded. But check out the pulley. Hang on, I'll get you a better. How fucking, how piss wobbly is that? It's not that it's loose. It's, I'd say they bent the shaft on the motor. Wouldn't surprise me because you look on top of the pulley, and a crack, a crack, and a crack, or it's been butchered back on. So, seeing that, hopefully they haven't got into this. So, I'm going to give this a full strip down and see how we go. But uh, that that is really tight on there. There was they had. Um, on the other pulley when I went to get this one off quite it's a bit of a thing that'll catch you out where the grub screw goes into the hole always take the first one out in case there's a second one and that was the case with this there was two two grub screws in each hole so um, there's absolutely no need for it in uh, this setup like this so I'll get a puller set up and we'll try and get this pulley off and then at least we can see, we'll, we'll probably weld that, remachine it. And I suspect that armatures are bent in the motor. So we'll have to straighten that because I'm not replacing it. Well, try and straighten it. I hopefully won't be replacing it. <laughs> okay, so we've got our puller set up. So we'll give this a uh, bit of a um, prod see how it goes um, it's got bearing separator plates down the bottom and that's all that I've got that hopefully will grip enough on the V's of the pulley so it won't um, damage them but I think we've got some movement we have we're away Um, this puller, this is one of the old uh, English uh, Sykes Pickavant pullers. Um, they're a grease-filled unit. It's like a hydraulic puller that's filled with grease. It has a piston inside. This one here is a little bit low on grease. I know I put a kit through it a uh, long time ago, but it was a um, it's quite a painful process to, to re-grease them. Well, I found it was anyway, because you can't have any air bubbles in. Let's go again. Um, what I don't want to do... Oh, no, I think we'll be right. <laughs> I was a bit worried about the motor dropping out the bottom, but uh, it sits on a plate, so that's okay. Okay, we'll take another bite at it. There we go, the right tool for the job. See that just there and down there, big aluminium shaving. And that key, look at the angle the bloody key sitting on. this crap out of there so if I end so we use 
I just want to put something next to it so I can see when it rotates. Let's see if that um, air gap changes. And it does. I bent the shaft. Idiots. Okay. Let's have a look at the uh, key on the inside of the pulley. You can see uh, a little bit butchered, salvageable, but butchered. So it's like looking like the key. Have to check that. Probably they had the key sitting. Ah, uh, yeah, I know what they've done. Okay, I know exactly what they've done. You might you can see. The key's actually bent. Okay, so I was just doing some editing and realised I hadn't pressed record for this part. Um, how they absolutely made a pig's ass of this on assembly. The keyway in the end of the shaft, it's been cut like with a wheel cutter. So the last part of the key way there comes up on a radius. So what happens? And this is how they've bent the key. Um, well, the key is a bit butchered too, but so it won't go in. So anyway, because it sits on a radius, the further that key goes down, it kicks up at an angle, starts climbing back out of the keyway. Now that's what's happened when I've reassembled this, and I've just kept flogging away at it, belt bash, 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 and shagged everything up. So what you do with these is you put the pulley on, and there's a, an invention, it's called long nose pliers. And you grab hold of the key with the pulley on, and then you lower the key down with the long nose pliers. <laughs> um, bearing shop today, too, so we've got our, our new bearings. So I've, got, I've opted for metal shield bearings. Um, any particular reason why? No, not really. Um, The neoprene steel bearings can run a little bit warmer. Um, you'd be surprised how much friction is actually generated on a neoprene uh, seal bearing um, where the seal runs on the race there. They, they do get quite warm, so I figured these probably run a bit cooler. That's the only reason behind that. Anyway, let's, um, I need to get back and continue editing this video that'll be why they've just kept smashing away on the end of the pulley cracked the pulley in three places and bent the motor shaft complete fucking imbeciles all right so it looks like i'll have to pull this armature out and uh repair this motor shaft as well so before we tackle the cracks in the pulley is uh three cracks there there and up here these have to be i'll have to um gouge these out with a rotary file rotary burr and we'll uh weld those back up then we'll have to set it back up and come in the groove with a tool and re-true up the sides of the um v-belt um groove so that shouldn't be too bad <laughs> the only scary part with that is um me me and uh, TIG welding aluminium. <laughs> that could be a bit of a worry, but yeah, we'll see. Um, oh, that's that. That's the bent keyway. So what we've got here is our shaft. So it's not only bent, it's been butchered on the end, and the end is mushroomed out as well. So... <laughs> I think they've butchered it pulling it apart and they've butchered it even more putting it back together. And the shaft appears to be bent 
from the shoulder. This is 7 16 diameter. So what I'm going to try first is set this up in the lathe and straighten the shaft and just repair the damage on the end of it. So we can grip one end in a chuck. Um, and the other end here, I'm going to grip this end in the steady rest. And then I'll get a piece of bar stock, drill it 7 16 so it's a neat fit over here. And with this held in the steady rest, we might be able to tweak that just a little bit. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'll probably, yeah, I'll put a new set of bearings in it while it's apart as well. So, so let's get this set up in the uh, lathe and have a crack. So we're just gripping our armature by the bearings and using the steady rest as a support. That way we can easily rotate it. And the bearings are going to get changed anyway. So looking at this, we've got about a 13th hour high spot directly opposite the keyway, which is kind of understandable, seeing how <laughs> the key was butchered. So we can roll it around till the indicator is just coming up on the edge of the keyway, just there. We're minus one thou. There's our high spot, and come back around to the keyway again. So we'll get back on our high spot, which is right there, and we'll give this shaft a bit of a tweak down. Let's put a bit of tubing over it. Well, that's um, sitting on five thou. Let's. Before we get too far, let's just take another uh, measurement and have a look. Just to see if we've moved it. Okay, we've halved that. It's our uh, six thou. Back on our high spot. About there. So we need to move that three thou back. Somewhere around there. Right, let's see what we're reading now. Edge of the key. That's a solid uh, thou and a half. This appears to be our high spot there, so we'll just give that a little tweak down.
try that. Doesn't take much. So we're minus half a thou by the key. Minus half on the other side. Okay, there's our high spot, half a thou. So we've got to move the shaft a quarter of a thou down. Yeah, I don't know how we'll go getting that last half thou out. It might be as good as we're able to get it, but half a thou is way better than 13 thou. Try that. Okay, edge of the key are on zero. Back to zero. Yeah, we've gone too far. So right there, that edge of the key, which is at 12 o'clock now, that's our high spot. So we've gone from half a thou up to a thou. <coughs> We we'll just go back half a thou. I think if we get back to half a thou, I'll let it go. I don't know, that moved quite easy then. <laughs> Okay, minus a half. Well, there they go at that. Let's zoom you in. So, all things considered, that's actually not that bad. Must be a few little humps and bumps. If I move the shaft very slowly. Oh, well, we're probably a quarter of a thou. Yeah. It's a half thou graduated indicator. I think I'll let that go at that. Let's check it right back here, probably Yeah, no, that's good the end it will tell a different story because of the uh, mushrooming. Re 
zero. Yeah, flicks up to a thousand and a half there. Yeah, that's the end. That's mushroom that we have to just touch with the file. Let's just grip this a little bit uh, different. We're going to drive off the chuck now. Right, we'll check that for size. That's good. Okay, we can let that go. That's that one salvaged. So that was uh, quite painless. Could have been a lot worse. But yes, I will, uh, while this armature is out, I'll get a new set of bearings for it. So we'll get these pressed off. So the bore of the pulley now, that got pretty damaged too in the uh, <laughs> in the assembly episode from previous. So now I've deburred it. It's got the old proverbial cock and a shirt sleeve fit. So what we're going to have to do is is sleeve it. So what I'll do after after we've done the welding and the V groove machining. We'll bore the center out, so all of this will disappear, and we'll uh, press this in and re-establish the bore. Let's get this uh, welded first. Now, as far as buying a uh, six-step pulley like this over here, well, that's just not going to happen. It's, uh, yeah, I seriously doubt it. I wouldn't even bother wasting my time looking. So we'll just repair this one. Well, that turned ugly very quick. Um, just grinding out in preparation to weld. And this whole piece just fell out. So when you look closely at it, it's had something going on in that little area, a black area before, possibly. But this is all a clean break all around it. Now that's from when all this got um, belted on. You can see that when I'm following that crack down, it eventually came, yeah, to, and it just broke out. So when I've been hitting on this, that's the rest of the crack all the way down the bottom. So I either got to build this all the way back up or dress this out and we'll put this piece back in.
So I'm just using my little Dremel and the best um, bet for the Dremel that I've found is, is uh, this one here. And see how it the cone reverses back the other way? This is the one I have the most success with um, uh, on uh, aluminium, as I've just found out. <laughs> it seems to not clog up the same. Bit of progress on the shaper. Out with the old and in with the new. And uh, put two new buttons in here as well. So just waiting for the uh, electrician to come and do the wiring. It's not something that I ever get involved with. Plus it's illegal over here unless you're um, licensed. And the uh, same with the big lathe. Uh, out with the old. Uh, mounted a couple of DIN rails in there to make it easy. And there are the new ones ready to go in when the electrician gets here. Okay, we'll bring this one to a close. Um, it, the video in no way was intended to be as disrupted as it was, but that's just how the <laughs> how the day went. I mean, um, I guess in the ocean you've got crustaceans, and in this game we have to deal with a lot of molestations. <laughs> so uh, onwards and upwards, and hopefully the electrician will be in today, so we can hop back on to uh, getting the part machined in the shaper and if he's not here today well I guess I'll carry on with the uh, working our way through this either or so anyway cheers thanks for watching and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next video or you'll see me cheers